Now, in, in many of the older, uh, you know, ancient texts, uh, spiritual texts, they talk about a concept called karma. You know, many of us, it's, it's, in, it's in the zeitgeist now. People call it instant karma now when something happens. And it is something that most people understand the concept of karma, you know, at least on an intellectual standpoint. Can you explain karma and what effect it has on our soul's purpose, our, our life plan and so on? My understanding of karma may be a bit different than the average understanding. What I've seen in my work is that karma is a feeling of incompletion in regard to a particular experience. Uh, to take a, a simple example, let's say the two people had a past life together in which one was ill and the other person was that person's caregiver. When those two people transition back to the other side and have their life of you, as we all do at the end of an incarnation, they'll see this caregiving relationship and they may or may not feel complete with it. May is the key word there. And they decide for themselves, we're complete with that or we feel incomplete. If they feel complete, then as I understand it, there is no karma and they'll go on to plan something completely new and different. But if they feel incomplete with it, the feeling of incompletion is the karma. So let's say they feel that way. How do they balance the karma? Well, the easiest thing to do is just to trade places. So now the one who was ill plans to be a caregiver. The one who is the caregiver plans the life challenge of physical illness. It's a very simple example, but that's essentially how it works. Well, so if you are, uh, you know, a thief um, or, you know, you're a thief in this life and you steal and you, you cause lots of misery for people because of the, your actions, um, there has to be a, a sort of, uh, you know, action reaction kind of scenario because you just can't go willy nilly, you know, doing all these kind of bad things in life and not, um, and not have some sort of karmic issue with it later on in another life, at least from my understanding from the, from the, the religious texts and the spiritual texts that I've read. That's my understanding as well. But the, the key to understanding all of that is to know that when you transition back to the other side, and let's say you were a thief in your last incarnation, if you could make the transition back to the non-physical realm, get there and not feel uh, incomplete with that experience, then you still would not have any karma. But the thing is, you're almost certainly going to feel that you want to balance it. That's simply the nature of an unconditionally loving soul. If you've done harm, then you want to make restitution. So it would be extremely unlikely that a thief would get back to the other side and say, you know what, I feel good about having been a thief. Let's go on and do something new. Very, very unlikely. So why would someone or a soul want to plan a life of evil, of mass murder, of, you know, of a dictator, of a Hitler or something along those lines of kills millions of people, the amount of that amount of um, pendulum swing to, you know, I'm not talking about stealing shoplifting here. We're talking mm -hmm. about massive, massive, uh, you know, quote unquote evil here on, on the planet. Why would someone, why would the soul want to experience that kind of, um, that kind of experience here in this, on this plane? I don't think that souls want to play that kind of a role what happens is the incarnate personality always has free will. So regardless of what has been planned, you can use your free will to make decisions in which you deviate partially or even completely from the pre-birth plan. And it's interesting you mentioned Hitler because it's my understanding that's what happened with him. I, what was explained to me in the channeling sessions for my books is that Hitler actually planned, believe it or not, to be a great spiritual leader. And so his soul equipped him with gifts that were intended to make that possible. <laughs> gifts of charisma, oratory, sure. rhetoric, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, there was even a specific option in Hitler's pre-birth blueprint that he would use his painting to spiritually inspire people. You he might was, know he liked to paint. He was very good at it, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But apparently he had quite a difficult childhood. And so he used his free will to respond to the challenges of his childhood by going in the opposite of the direction that had been planned. That I think is what happens. 
To watch the full video, click on the link below. And don't forget to subscribe.